A new series on CBS This Morning called Pay Attention takes a look at technology's impact on our ability to focus and how we can reclaim our attention from the tech that is distracting us. <laughs> the average American spends five hours a day on mobile devices. That's 76 full days a year. There are benefits, though, like making connections and learning, but these devices also impact our ability to focus. So John Dickerson allowed cameras to follow him home to document a typical Saturday where he used his phone and computer and a second Saturday where he used no technology at all. My first interaction with mankind, with any other sentient life, was with my phone. So now I'm opening Clear Tune, which allows me to tune my guitar. Today I have a big piece of writing to do, uh, so I need to find some time to be focused. After about 45 minutes, the normal itchiness of writing or of working, you can escape from those by well, let's just check in with the email. Detour leads to detour leads to detour, and then suddenly you're in Albuquerque. Then there's that digital siren call. The interruption online, you can go off down a rabbit hole that tells you, and here I'm now getting another. Oh, now this thing has gone off again. Oh, did you hear that? Come on. Come on, George. Let's go for a walk. Come on. A notification on your phone, or even the anticipation of one, releases dopamine. Somebody liked an Instagram photo. The chemical responsible for controlling the brain's reward and pleasure centers. If you take 24 hours in a day, and let's say that I'm sleeping eight hours a day, that leaves 16 hours. My phone has just interrupted me with a text. So we keep coming back for more. On this Saturday, I picked up the phone 86 times, using it for more than four hours. That's in addition to a few hours on the computer. Again. Come on in. There it is, by itself in digital timeout for the whole day, my phone. I cannot touch it. It's 10:20 in the morning. I've wanted to send these messages or check things. This is probably about as I'm about a dozen times. The idea behind this is no devices in here at all. Dr. Michael Baim so runs the mindfulness time program time. at the University of Pennsylvania. I'm a big proponent of mindfulness for things like this because mindfulness is really a process that trains your attention to be more stable. He says when our attention is wobbly, we no longer make a choice to stay focused. We automatically pick up our phones. Today I've gone without technology and increasingly over the course of the day I've had this hunted feeling, this itchy <laughs> feeling. What's happening to me? You're stepping in the way of a habit. It's hard. The thing that devices take from us is the ability to have a full, complete focus. So when attention is drawn here and there over and over again, it becomes fragmented. And our experience of the whole world becomes fragmented in that same way. CBS This Morning co-host John Dickerson is here to tell us more about this experience. So, um, John, it's really interesting uh, because you can tell that in your personal life that you have you enjoy the simple things in life. I noticed that you were sharpening your pencil. Very few people right. use pencils. I've noticed your field notes, your notebook that you use as a field note. You write these little notes in there. Um, you know, you're playing a guitar. And so how have you been able to marry this life with this technology? Because it doesn't strike me as you'd be the typical technology addict. Right. Well, I like simple things because I'm a simple person. <laughs> um, or simple I don't know ton. about <laughs> um, I doubt that's true. Part, part of the reason that I like, you know, nice pencils and fountain pens and notebooks and yeah. paper is in part a reaction to the, these little screens that are in our lives all the time. I spend so much time on my screens writing usually, but then also consuming news as we all do mm -hmm. and being kind of whipsawed by that news. And so interacting with something that does not require batteries or plugging in is itself just a vacation from that other thing. And so that's a part, partial way with this long-term struggle that I've written about and talked about over the years. And one of the great things about this series is basically I'm now forcing myself to actually come to terms with and try and figure this thing out, not in a piecemeal way, but in a way that is structured enough that maybe it can help other people. Mm. Is there anything that surprised you about that Saturday where you did not have technology? I'm sure you, you, you sort of thought ahead of time of what you thought it would be like and how you would react. Any surprises once it happened? Well, 
not, I guess what was interesting is how quickly the feeling of peace finally kicked in. So I, I, I felt the itchiness and yeah. the kind of frantic, because also it's not just stupid stuff that we right. check into. We all know what it's like when you are just kind of in a loop of checking stupid things online. Yeah. But, you know, I want to be in touch with my family. My son had a baseball game. I wondered how that went. So there are useful things. And the whole point of this is not to completely detox. It's to find a balance. So in the process of, of not using it for a day, which was to create a kind of a baseline, I did, after several hours, stop having the instinct to go check it. And that kind of natural uh, focus that happened was nice, as yeah. opposed to saying, I am now going to focus, and I'm going to stay here and focus. So to, ha to lapse into focus is what you want, you know? And, and so to find a little bit of that just in a single day suggested that if I ever find this balance, that it, that might be available to me on every day. Right. Well, it does strike me that you have found a bit of balance. I was noticing, you have a, you have a wonderful Instagram feed, and our viewers should know that uh, they should check out your Instagram feed where you posted a picture recently of a family heirloom and you tied that into your son and you tied it into your mother, your son's grandmother, and it's a beautiful story. And so we wouldn't know about that. We wouldn't know about that stone, about that little thing that you posted on Instagram if you hadn't used this technology to disperse it or to distribute it to a wider audience. So it's a fantastic question because I found that stone with my picture on it from elementary school, which my mother had kept on her desk in the course of this Saturday when I had when I wasn't using technology. So let's imagine I had my phone with me, I find the stone, I then like get distracted somehow. I would have not had the sort of peace to ruminate over what this meant why this meant something to me in my life. So in the sense of interacting more mindfully in your day, I came across those revelations, which I, which I then worked on during this period when I wasn't using the phone. Mm. But then, to prove the point of the uh, series, which is that we can't be done with these altogether, and we wouldn't want to be, right. I then posted it on Instagram, and as you said, a lot of people have reacted. It was meaningful for me, it was meaningful for other people. So it shows you both things. You want the placidity to be able to think about these things, but then you also want the devices to connect with other people, share ideas, create a kind of a community. So. That, that's exactly, yeah. that, that basically was the nicest product out of this first stage of this experiment. The that's doctor really cool. that you spoke to about mindfulness, what I thought was so interesting about what he said is that it gives us an opportunity to sort of have a more stable mind. I never thought of the word stable. Yeah. And as you're talking, I'm imagining, you know, all the thoughts and uh, uh, inspirations that could occur mm -hmm. uh, that don't because we're easily drawn away now. Yeah, you know? and that instability, I, I love that um, phrase as well because it suggests two things. One, this is not something that can be fixed just by putting your phone away for a minute or changing it to grayscale. This requires kind of a stepping back and, yeah. a, and a new kind of mindset. And that stable attention doesn't just keep you from being whipsawed or addicted to your devices, but it also makes you a more uh, kind of a thoughtful person, recognize the right. world around you, recognize things that are happening, and have a deeper, richer experience. So while you're trying to get away from these devices that are controlling you, you get a sidecar of having a potentially more rich life if your attention is in fact deployed towards the things you want it to be. Now you got to know what those things are, right? Yeah, I right. mean, if you're yeah, aimlessly you know wandering anymore? around. Right. We've been distracted for years right, now. <laughs> right. And so one of the first steps that a lot of the people I talk to about this is, is you step back and think, what do I want to do? Do I want to play more guitar and spend more time learning, you know, music theory instead of just, you know, monkeying around on the yeah. guitar? <laughs> or do I want to uh, spend more time out in nature and then devoting your new attention towards those goals and uh, you know that's uh, not a bad way to do it if you can keep on track that's right. the key that's challenge the key. Right. well so earlier on CBS this morning you spoke with Katherine Price author of how to break up with your phone the 30-day plan to take back your life let's listen a little bit to her theory about this the reason that it makes you twitchy not to have your phone is that it's actually causing your brain to go into this reward cycle, similar to a slot machine when you go to pull the slot machine lever and then you want to keep doing it compulsively. That's exactly what you're doing on your phone. I mean, even to the degree of actually swiping down to see what's going to be waiting for you. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it's unpredictable makes us want to do it even more. You, you know, it's, doctors have long... I feel like this long, woman has been spying on well, me. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, they've long suggested that um, the addictions that we have to these devices and technology does trigger dopamine, other... Uh, 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 you know, things happen in the brain that are very similar to any kind of addiction that we have, right? And so breaking off from it, it's not just a question of putting it to the side. You have to train yourself. 100%. Your brain is basically putting your hand in your pocket, and you don't have control over it. <laughs> right. And the people who design the phones and the apps, they know that about your brain, and they are aiming right for that. And that's why you have to do this stepping back, because you are rewiring, in a sense, your brain. And so it requires something more. I mean, you and, and also, it's, again, it's not 
it's like uh, it's not total total de detox. So you wouldn't go on a diet and say I'm never eating again. It's it's finding that balance, and that's the hardest thing because you are you are still using it, but then not using it to this in the way in which you just get totally lost into this dopamine cycle. And the worst thing about the dopamine cycle is that it is more powerful the more um, uh, uh, alternative the rewards are. So in other words, it's not constantly a wonderful reward. It's sometimes when there's, a, when there's an email you don't like, that makes you want the positive reward all the more so oh, you'll check wow. it again. So the inconsistency, <laughs> the like inconsistency of reward yeah. is what locks in that, that dopamine cycle. It's like the slot machine. You yeah. don't win every time. Yeah. Right. But the possibility you might get one win keeps you there pulling that uh, lever. So part of the reason I'm having this reaction is, A, I know I have a problem with this because I subconsciously <laughs> just sort of pick up the phone. But I'm also thinking of my daughter yeah. who is six and now she's, or she's seven now, and so she's graduated to not just sort of looking at videos but also playing games on mm -hmm. on these apps and you know I can see her reaction like as soon as the homework's done she's like can I have the iPad now well, you know what's amazing is that well not amazing but I can't think of another addiction that is both for the parents and the kids yeah. it's a misery for the whole family <laughs> yes. um, what other and so there's a lot of modeling you do as a parent and yeah. so when you model your own use of devices they're picking that up mm -hmm. uh, and dr. Bame when we talked about and we'll this will be in another part of the series but when he talks about and lays out the rewiring of the brain of the next generation and they will build the next generation of devices which will continue and amplify that rewiring mm. uh, he paints a pretty dark picture about because why is this important we need attention and focus to do our best work, yeah. to do our deepest work, to have real insights as opposed to just skittering along life on the top of the water. Yeah. And that's, if we lack that, if we lose that, then we lose the, the real creativity, real insight, and that's what we need to mm -hmm. you know, live a more productive life as a society. Mm -hmm. uh, John, before we let you go real quick, I mean, from one reader to another, I know you, I think I can guess the answer. You like physical books, but do you have a Kindle? Well, you know, I, I I do because you know traveling as much as say. we all do, yes. you, you can't carry around these books. And also, you want a sample. One time, you want something a little lighter. Sometimes, you want a history. But I I can't do I I hate, I hate it. I yeah. like real books, and I feel like the the um, I'm getting a deeper experience with the real books. I can write in the margins. Yeah. Um, and um, and in Catherine Price's book, she talks about why that is. Um, a lot of times, and especially if you're reading a web page, the links there send a subliminal message to your brain saying, "Click on me," uh. even if if you ignore it, yeah. your brain is having to manage that link, mm -hmm. and so you're not reading with the attention you would if it were on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And you can feel that. You yes. can feel that you're that it's not imprinting in the way it does with an actual physical book. So if I could carry them all around, but then I'd need like three you things need a bag. Luggage. I mean, right. I, I actually I graduated from reading my Kindle on my iPad. I got rid of that and I got the paper white, which is less stuff on it. And then I finally made the leap back to books just recently, mm -hmm. and it's it was, but it's a long road. I mean, mm -hmm. and of course, when you travel, you have to take the camera. And if you're an underliner, the paperweight can't keep up with no, the underline, no. you're underlining the wrong thing, <laughs> then you're suddenly on page 37,000, which is like, why does this have 37 pound pages? It's a 13 page book. Right, right. <laughs> and you know, and then, so then now, where are you? Yeah, it's exactly. an hour later, and you're yelling at your paperweight. So. Looking John. forward to the rest of the yeah, series, really. John. Thank you very much. Thanks. Yeah, that was great. So you can hear more, including uh, from the interview with author uh, Catherine Price on the CBS This Morning podcast. It's available on iTunes. Pick up your phone. It's available on iTunes, uh, Apple's uh, podcast app. <laughs> and check out uh, CBSThisMorning.com for more. I feel horrible saying we're all like, of this. We're like giving all the, just make sure you use these devices. CBSN is what? on a device. Yes. We are encouraging you to be on all right. devices. Use them judiciously. <laughs> right. You know, it's not get rid of it of completely. No, no. This is yes. the information you want when you pick up your device. Uh, you can hear more about the conversation with the good doctor about mindfulness, right? Yes, thank you, John. <laughs>